Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. I am Pat from Pat's Path Predictor and we have an enhanced risk for today, an enhanced risk for tomorrow, and we have a slight risk for day three as well as the other, uh, day four and day five we have some interesting weather coming. So let's go ahead and dive right into all of this. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. So there's an enhanced risk issued for parts of Texas and New Mexico right here, including the cities of Amarillo, Lubbock, uh, Rip, uh, Abilene, uh, Fort Stockton, uh, Odessa, Midland, etc. So, yeah, this area, uh, area, this area is uh, going to probably affect uh, 1.7 million people. That's how many people are in this enhanced risk right here. So, that's what's going on. The slight risk encompasses parts of eastern New Mexico, southeastern Colorado, parts of uh, southwest Kansas, Panhandle, and parts of southwest Oklahoma, and the rest of north and central Texas right here. The marginal risk encompasses basically the outside areas into Colorado, uh, close to Denver actually, as well as this area right here from Cleveland down to um, Alabama. So yeah, there's also a slight risk right here, so we'll be keeping an eye out on that. So let's go ahead and look at the risks for you so we can assess this. Tornado risk is the lowest threat. It's at, two per it's at 5 percent in this enhanced risk area right here, 2 percent in the slight risk, so that's not what's warranting this enhanced risk. The wind threat it's at 15%, and it, which it is at 15% for parts of New Mexico and Texas right here, 5% for the rest of the area, as well as 15% in parts of Virginia, including Roanoke. The hail threat is by far the largest threat. Right, We have a 30% uh, hail threat with a hatched area, which means there is a 30% risk of 2-inch hail or greater within 25 miles of a point. So, yeah, that's not going to be fun. There's that 15% risk with some of it in the hatched area as well. So... If you're in this area, you got to keep an eye out for that hail. So let's go ahead and re read some of the summary and the synopsis, and we'll go ahead and dive right into this. Summary. To severe thunderstorms are expected across parts of the southern high plains into central Texas beginning in the mid-afternoon and persisting through tonight. Very large hail and a few tornadoes will be the primary hazards. Southern plains. Current surface analysis shows a res reservoir of, low, of rich low-level moisture in place over south and central Texas. Southeasterly low-level winds will transport this air uh, mass northwestward uh, with rapid uh, moistening and destabilization of the boundary layer across west Texas into eastern New Mexico. All right, and eastern New Mexico, excuse me, this afternoon and evening. Relatively st uh, strong heating and only weak capping inversion is likely to lead to several supercells developing across uh, by the, the area by mid-afternoon. Storms will first form along the retreating warm front of the Permian Basin in the hill in hill, the hill country. Deep layer shear profiles will promote discrete supercell structure, while low uh, level winds are sufficient for risk uh, uh, the risk of a few tornadoes through the afternoon and evening. However, very large hail is expected to be the primary th uh, risk along these storms these quarters. Later this afternoon and evening, the development of discrete storms along, including supercells, uh, will occur farther north across the western Texas Panhandle and parts of new, into northeast New Mexico, and even southeast Colorado. These storms will be drier in uh, a you know, drier boundary layer environment, but steep lapse rates in the strength of the mid-upper level winds will be conducive for very large hail formation, or perhaps a tornado or two. So, very large hail is the primary threat for the, uh, for these storms right here. It's not tornadoes, it's very large hail. When I mean very large, I mean we could see two to three inches uh, uh, inches in diameter of hail. That's how large we're talking about. And that, uh, that can break windows, that can break windshields, that can cause serious damage to your roof. Yeah, it's not fun. Now we'll go ahead and talk about what's going on in Virginia and North Carolina. Full sunshine is occurring this morning across much of southern Virginia and northern North Carolina, where dew points in the, are in the upper 50s and lower 60s will yield Cape values of around 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram. Scattered thunderstorms are currently over the mountains in extreme uh, southwest Virginia and eastern Tennessee and will spread eastward and intensify this afternoon as they encounter unstable air. This should lead to scattered strong to severe thunderstorms capable of damaging winds and hail. Actively, uh, activity will track eastward roughly along the North Carolina-Virginia border through the early evening. So let's go ahead and look at the at this right here. This is the Cape values for parts of Texas and New Mexico. Parts of Texas, we're seeing Cape values cracking 2,000, 2,500, sometimes 3,000 in some areas. So yeah, that's not the... Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty uh, decent environment. With the cap not being very strong, these storms can fire off 
pretty quickly. So, yeah, that's the situation. Let's go ahead and take a look in the Mid-Atlantic right here. This is where the Cape is in Virginia, North Carolina. Yeah, we're seeing up to 2,000 joules per kilogram of Cape right here, 1,500, 2,000. Uh, we're not cracking 2,500 yet, but it's still uh, it's still a pretty, uh, pretty decent uh, uh, environment right there. So let's go ahead and actually go to the day two uh, outlook now and just see what's going on with that. This is the day two outlook as uh, as of t uh, today. As you can see, Kansas and Oklahoma are under an enhanced risk right here, including the cities of Wichita, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and Norman, as well as Fort Sill just outside of it. The slight risk goes from Texas all the way to Missouri, including Springfield and Wichita Falls. So, yeah, the mar and the marginal risk goes is everywhere else, including St. Louis, Jackson, Memphis, uh, Albaline, uh, Kansas City, etc. So that's what's going on right here let's look at the risks because the tornado risk is considerably high for uh, for this because it has a 10 percent look at that hatched area right there it means there is a 10 percent or, or greater of a hatch uh, or greater of ef2 to ef5 tornadoes happening within 25 miles of a point so that's not a good sign right there five percent two percent no no change there the wind threat is at 15 percent uh, right here, uh, encompassing the enhanced and slight risk uh, right here, the marginal risk at 5%. The hail threat, though, is the largest th uh, is the largest threat. It's, it's just like t for today, it's at 30% with that hatched area, which uh, basically means that we're, we could see 2-inch ha uh, is of hail or greater within this area right here. So that's the risks right there. The tornado and hail threat are what are the most pronounced threats, so go ahead and read the summary and parts of the synopsis to understand what's going on. Summary. A severe threat is expected to develop on Monday over the southern and central plains eastward into the Ozarks. Large hail, wind damage, and tornadoes will, poss or will be possible Monday afternoon and evening. A marginal severe threat will also be possible across parts of the west central Texas and western Tennessee Valley. Southern and Central Plains. An upper trough will move eastward in, in, across the Southern and the Central High Plains on Monday as a 45 to 60 knot mid-level jet translates eastward uh, through the base of the trough. At the surface, a, a low will move southeastward uh, into the Northeast Oklahoma as a cold front advances southeastward along Western Kansas into the Western Oklahoma. By afternoon, a dry line will uh, set up for a frontal, uh, frontal triple point in western Oklahoma, extending it south southwest into northwest and west central Texas. A warm front will advance northward uh, across eastern Kansas into central Missouri. Surface dew points in the, across the moist sector will be in the mid 60s Fahrenheit, where moderate instability is expected by afternoon. Conduce, uh, convection is forecast to initiate ahead of the uh, the cold front in, from the south central uh, uh, from south central Kansas, excuse me, into north central Oklahoma during the late afternoon. Rapid thunderstorm intensification should occur with several clusters of, of strong to severe thunderstorms moving eastward from central and northern Oklahoma into eastern Kansas in, during the early evening. Isolated thunderstorms are expected across further uh, southwest along the dry line parts of northwest and west central Texas. The environment across the, uh, the, environment acro uh, across, uh, the, the southern and central plains may become very favorable for severe storms depending on how on early day activities shifting eastward away from the region. The North American model forecast soundings from Wichita southward to Oklahoma City at 0 Z, which is 7 p.m. Central Time on Tuesday, are, are very impressive with loaded gun soundings. Uh, Cape is forecast to be two to 3,000 joules per kilogram range. That's where it's going to be with 0 to 6 kilometer shear from 50 to 60 knots. This combined with 700 to 500 millibar lapse rates near 8 degrees Celsius per kilometer and three uh, one to three kilometer uh, storm parameter sp uh, space uh, so, sorry what relative helicities of 450 to 500 meters per second per a uh, meter squared per second squared this will uh, be a high-end parameter space for very favorable very favorable for supercells with large hail wind damage and tornadoes hailstones greater than two inches in diameter will be possible in the more intense severe uh, cell supercells uh, on updrafts, excuse me. As low level shear ramps up during the late afternoon and early evening, tornadoes will be possible with uh, the more intense supercells. Model forecasts show a strong low level jet response across northeast Oklahoma. Supercells that develop to the west of the west and northwest of the low level jet 
should be associ uh, associated with a threat for strong tornadoes, and an EF th plus three tornado may occur. Ad in addition, wind damage will be possible with supercells and, and with any organizing short bowing line segments. Now, I'm going to highlight this real quickly. Supercells that develop west and northwest of the low-level jet uh, should be associated with any with a threat for strong tornadoes with an EF3 plus tornado to occur. Uh, 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 may occur. You do not want to hear that in a bulletin that's just out for tomorrow. You don't want to hear that. So, yeah, if, if you get anything from this, take it very seriously. And I will keep an eye out uh, for this as the situation develops. We might see a moderate risk at by the end of the day, but I know I may be jumping the gun when I say that, but we could be. You never know. But that being said, let's continue. A severe threat should develop south south uh, westward into northwest Texas into west central Texas. You know, do the east of the dry line, but conve uh, convective coverage will be more isolated there. Large hail and wind damage will be possible with supercells that form late in the afternoon, early evening. Now, I want to take a look at the. I want to take actually take a look at this very quickly. So, okay, so I want to take a look at the Cape values. Uh, the Nam is the one to go. I want to look at these Cape values just to see if I'm missing anything. So, yeah, this this is a very conducive environment right here according to the NAM right here. I want to look at the wrap as well, just to... Okay, this this is telling a completely different uh, and more detailed story. We're seeing Cape values in the severe uh, hazard areas cracking, on average, 3,000 joules per kilogram. We're seeing some 3,500s. We're seeing 4,000 down in Mexico right here, but I don't think there's going to be storms firing up there. So, but yeah, there's a broad area of 3,000 to 3,500 joules of, per kilogram of Cape that is all across the enhanced risk. So if that cape goes up anymore, then odds are we could see, be seeing a moderate risk because the cap with this, I mean, there is some cap to, there is a little bit of cap to this. There is some uh, right here. There is some, but it's not that, uh, but it's not, yeah, it's, there's some, but it's, okay, the, ca the cap here, like the cap is more off, more up here in this area in Oklahoma, but yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on it as that as the situation develops. Ozarks in the Western Tennessee Valley. That's just for the slight marginal risk is. So, we'll be pay, I'll pay attention to it, but I'll be paying close attention to the uh, one of this. Third one, this there's a slight risk for parts of Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Tennessee, and Tennessee. So, we'll just go ahead and read this real quickly. An upper level trough will move across the Ozarks on Tuesday as a West, oh, west southwesterly cyclonic mid-level flow remains over the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. At the surface, a cold front will advance southeastward into the mid Mississippi Valley as a moist and unstable air mass that spreads northeastward across the Ohio Valley. Cape is forecast to reach 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram across much of the mid Mississippi and Ohio valleys by Tuesday afternoon. In addition, a 45 to 55 knot mid-level jet will uh, move across the region, uh, uh, creating moderate uh, deep layer shear. This, combined with steep level low level wraps rates, will be favorable for severe thunderstorms capable of producing wind damage. Supercells with isolated large hail could also occur with cells that remain discrete. The main concern on Tuesday is the convection in the morning that uh, will impact the air mass later in the day. This could keep some areas in more stable, re uh, reducing for severe threats. The slight risk, uh, a slight risk has been placed in confidence where the greatest among concerning destabilization. Further down southwest, along the mid-Mississippi and Ozarks, a severe threat will be possible Tuesday afternoon. A large-scale large ascent will be uh, considerably less with, uh, with southward extent. Deep layer shear will also be weaker uh, further southwest. These two factors uh, should keep any severe threat isolated and concentrated near peak heating. So that's basically what's going on for day three. We could see some thunderstorms, but it shouldn't be too bad. Like the probabilistic's only at 15%. So I'll be keeping an eye on it. But this, what's coming up next? This is this is the area I have the most concern with right now. Day four, there is now a 30% risk, which is equa equivalent to an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms. There's a 30% risk for severe thunderstorms in parts of Oklahoma and Texas. And then again, it is May, so. That that is that is not unexpected, but it encompasses Oklahoma City, Norman, Fort Sill, and Wichita Falls. That's tornado country right there. That's 
that's severe. Th that's severe storm. Uh, that's the severe thunderstorm capital. So, yeah, that's what's going on. It's a 30% in this area, 15% in parts from Kansas down to Texas. So we'll be go, go we'll keep an eye on it. We'll go ahead and read the discussion for day four. Actually, before we do that, let's go to day five. There's 15% risk from Dallas all the way up to uh, all the way up to Illinois right here. There's a 15% risk right here. So yeah, then there's predictability too low. So let's go ahead and read uh, days four and day five, which is discussion days four and day five. An upper level trough is forecast to move into the southern and central high plains on Wednesday with strong moisture advection occurring ahead of the system. In response, a moist air mass should be placed by the afternoon across much of the Oklahoma and, te and Texas. Thunderstorms are forecast to initiate east of, the, of a dry line in the late afternoon and then move eastward across the southern uh, high, uh, southern plains. Model forecasts show an unstable air mass in place by the afternoon with moderate deep layer shear over much of the southern plains. S uh, st severe storm development will be, like, will li be likely as storms increase in coverage late by late afternoon and early evening. The environment should support a few supercells and support supercells with large hail, along with wind damage and a few tornadoes. A 30% contour has been added into the area with confidence of the greatest de concerning destabilization and co uh, convection coverage. So, I may be going off a whim here, but it appears the hail threat is the biggest threat right now. But I may be getting ahead of myself, so I'll be paying uh, I'll be paying attention. Uh, to this uh, as the situation progresses. So anyway, let's go to day five, which is Thursday. On Thursday, a, the upper level trough is forecast to move into the Ozarks as a cold front advances southeastward into the Ozarks and Arklatex. Ahead of the front, a moist, unstable air mass will be in place. Thunderstorm development is expected during the day along and ahead of the front. Although some differences are evident, model, uh, uh, model uh, forecasts generally agree that moderate instability and moderate to strong deep layer shear will exist ahead of the front Thursday afternoon. Thunderstorms that form in areas that heat up the most will have a chance to become uh, better organized and produce severe wind and hail. For this reason, the 15% contour has, is maintained and shifted to the east due to the new runs that have a faster solution. So, yeah, they shifted this away from Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, they shifted it more to Arkansas and Missouri, so that's what's going on. I want to see if the NAM can go this far out with it. With, I want to see if the NAM can go this far out with the Cape right here. This is for this is day three. I want to look at day four. So, yeah, let's look at this. Okay, we're seeing Cape values cracking 3,000 in a lot of areas, and this is already three days out. I want to look at the the dew points real quickly because. We're seeing upper 60s to 70, uh, lower 70s dew points right there. So, yeah, this thing, uh, this, th so yeah, this thing's gonna be pretty moist. Let's look at the temperature right here. Oh, okay, yeah, the temperature right here. Yeah, as you can see, it's in the upper 70s to the lower 80s. So, with that dew point, we're seeing humidity into the upper 80s to lower 90s right here. So, yeah, definitely enough for. Uh, severe thunder uh, definitely enough moisture for severe weather so yeah that's the situation we have right here if you're for today if you're in parts of texas and new mexico take the, uh, take the hail threat very seriously for tomorrow uh, the, for tomorrow especially with that warning of an ef3 plus tornado possible if you're in that enhanced risk area take that very seriously we could see a moderate risk for tomorrow I may be jumping the gun on this once again, but it is possible at this rate. But with that being said, that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps you out, helps you make more videos like these. Also helps inform more of the public about this weather. And the goal here is to get more people involved. And with that being said, guys, have a wonderful day. If you're in, t if you're in Western Texas today, prepare for the hail, prepare for the worst, and most importantly, stay safe.